I'm here to talk about so many of the issues that I see women discussing and harboring as like these emotional battlefields when it comes to weight, weight loss, food, nutrition, getting healthy, staying healthy, and all of the things that go into um, doing that. And you know, it shouldn't be as complicated as we've made it out to be, right? Like it shouldn't be this hard thing that becomes this like emotionally so ah, crazy making thing in our head, but it does. And one of the things that can wreak havoc on uh, a woman's confidence, sense of self worth, uh, how that you know how we go about feeling about ourselves, the clothes we decide to wear, um, what we put on if we want to be or go out at night, is the number on the scale. So I don't know about you, but I can tell you that there was a point in my life where I'd probably stand on the scale anywhere between ten and fifteen times a day. I'd wake up go pee, stand on the scale. Then I'd eat and stand on the scale. Then I'd uh, go out and do something and come back and stand on the scale. Or I'd exercise and stand on the scale. And I'd stand on the scale before I'd go to bed at night, right? It's a lot. Hey, Sally, nice to see you. If you're popping on, please say hi. I always find it so weird to talk to a screen sometimes. And so it's nice to know if you're here watching. And if you have anybody in your life that you know struggles with just the mindset around what it takes to get healthy. And if they are on a weight loss journey, share this Facebook live show with them. Um, you know, it's helpful because this is coming at it from a really different perspective than the old outdated eat, you know, eat less, move more, or let's just do something for 21 days. And that's going to be the solution. In fact, I'm here to actually tell you the opposite. Weight loss is one of the most incredible journeys you can ever like ever go on because it is the most transformative experience of your life. It's incredibly personal and you can never escape yourself, nor can you just decide that you're not going to eat, right? Often when people are trying to dissociate from behaviors that are negative, whether it's like drinking or smoking or drugs or whatever, they can just simply quit the behavior with some work to go along with it. But we can't quit, like we can't quit eating. We need to eat to survive and we need nourishment. So it's complicated. But here's what I'm going to tell you, you know, I come from a purely, you know, scientific focus on this where I look at all of the literature around healthy weight loss and best practices and what the experts in academia are telling us based on, you know, based on like studies that track thousands and thousands of people who are, you know, either losing weight successfully or not losing weight at all. Now, what's interesting is I've also got a, a ton of colleagues in this area, and you're going to meet people from every walk of life who will tell you to approach the scale in a different way. Some will say, throw it out, don't look at it. If that makes you feel bad, well, then don't do anything that makes you feel bad. To others who say, no, you need to keep track, you need to weigh every single day, to pretty much everything in between. So let's just get clear on a few things. When we're in a, a transformative experience, it's really easy to get lost in it or to become obsessive with it or consumed by it. And if you don't understand what the data is telling you, it's really easy to have things get messed up in your mind. And by data, I mean the scale, right? So I just read an article the other day that says it's really hard to change something if you can't track it. How do you know that change is happening? Do you just decide because it's how you feel? You know, you feel like you're doing a good job or you feel like you're do the, like doing the appropriate things or you feel like you're losing weight. I think one of the worst times for the scale is when you feel like you've lost weight and then you step on it and the number goes up. And so I'm going to talk about the science of that in a second, but first of all, why would we ever give our power or our sense of self-worth to an, an inanimate object? right? We are the ones that create our feelings based on what we see and how we choose to think about it. And so you have to look at so much more than just what the scale is telling you. When you decide to change your life by choosing to change your relationship with your body or with food or with weight, like your weight or, you know, your emotional eating challenges, you're, you're taking a life-changing journey and no journey that's life-changing is ever just going to be that quick. And there's multiple data pieces that we need to put into this. And so a couple of those data pieces, and this is worth writing down. It's what's my energy like during the day? How do I, how do I feel? What's my mood like? Uh, how do my clothes fit? Right? How does it feel when I put on the same pair of jeans, you know, a week, three weeks, six weeks later? How do I, how does my, like, how's my self-confidence? How's my, how's my eating? 
how's my relationship, you know, to food late at night when normally I would be like maybe snacking on the sweet and salty or the chewy and chocolatey, right? And then of course, yeah, there is scale weight because here's, I'm going to tell you a funny story. What we think we do, so our feeling or our perception of something can often be very different than the reality or the truth of what we're doing. And so that's a very blah, a very big concept. But what I mean by it is sometimes you can feel, right? You can feel like things are going just awesome. But then you check in with the data and actually when you look in on it, things aren't really that great, right? It's like if you feel like you're doing awesome with your eating because you focus on the one thing, like you've had really healthy lunches, but then you choose to forget about all of the other times that you may have engaged in emotional eating at night or got to go out to restaurants because of work or some sort of commitment, then our feeling will be different than the reality of what's actually happened during the week. And so if you feel like you've done a really good job and then you step on the scale and you see that it's gone up, then that's when women tend to feel badly about themselves. But if you were to able to, you know, if you're able to keep track of your week and all of the different things that you're doing, then it shows you how, you know, actually I did have really good lunches, but I had all of these extra things in my life that, you know, it's probably pretty normal that my weight has stayed the same. I am a big fan of tracking change over time because, you know, I happen to just, uh, you know, those um, like activity monitors you can get. So I've been working lots lately, but I've felt like I've done a pretty good job of maintaining my steps and, and my exercise habits and, and, you know, being committed. However, after tracking my activity for about the past week, my perception is very different than the reality, you guys, completely transparently, like totally transparently. So because I wanted to believe that I was still doing a pretty good job, and here's the thing, most of us, we, we want to believe the good about ourselves. We really do. We tell ourselves a lot of negative, but we also still try to search for the good. So I was putting a lot of meaning into how I was feeling about it. But when I actually saw the data, when I actually saw the numbers, and I was like, regularly, I'm getting less than half of the amount of activity that I need to and want to, but yet I felt like it had been the same. It would, it's a very quick micro glimpse into if I continue that pattern for a really long time, not only would I see my fitness decline, I'd probably see, um, you know, I'd probably see some increase in weight because I'm used to eating for a certain activity level, right? So it's just an awareness that how you feel about something is different than reality. Now, when you are tracking things, right, and you're writing it down, that is a way to keep track of your reality and match it. And I always talk about money this way, right? It can feel like I'm saving a ton of money because I'm not going out to spend the same way that I might have when I didn't have a budget, right? So I compare to what I used to do. I used to spend, you know, I used to get lattes or I used to go and buy, go shopping four or five times a week or always just pop into the drugstore and grab a new like mascara or whatever, hair product. So because I don't do those things anymore, I might feel like I'm doing really well and that my bank account should be growing. But if I'm not looking at my bank account and looking at my numbers, well, then I never really know. And so, and that's, you know, it's easy. You can see how it happens, right? And so what I want you to understand is the more you choose to take charge of, of being aware, not just of the good, but of also the things that get in the way, the quicker you'll become successful. And that also means being totally autonomous with governing your mindset so that the scale does not influence how you feel about yourself. If the scale doesn't change or if the scale goes up, then you need to know, huh, what I'm doing is not working in the way that I need it to be working for me. The scale is just one data piece. That's it. Now, if you're wondering, weight loss best practices, the research says that people who are most effective on a weight loss journey will weigh themselves no more than one to two times a week. So this idea of weighing yourself every day, now that's where the crazy making comes in, right? Because your body has fluctuations, right? There are things that can cause water retention, like having salty meals or eating salty, yeah, being out at a restaurant and having a lot of sodium come into your food that way. Um, it can be the time of the month, right? We all know that during menstrual cycle, there can be this retention of water. Julie, hey, Julie. Um, I just saw your hand wave there. 
you know, the, your scale can go up if you're bloated or retaining water. And some women will experience that with like puffy wrists, puffy ankles, uh, their rings will be tight. Uh, what else can happen? Oh, carbohydrate. So a lot of times people get really f confused about carbs. And here's the thing. When you take in, when you consume more carbs, carbs like to party with water. I say water is their best friend. In fact, you have to have water come into your body so that the carbohydrate can be stored. So when you have a higher carbohydrate meal, like say you go to an Italian restaurant or you have more carbs on normal on Sunday night and then you step on the scale Monday morning, of course, the scale might be a little bit higher. There's a higher water weight there. So we women always just think it's fat going up and down. But that's why we have to be consistent over time because just like a log on a fire, you would never expect that log to combust immediately, right? A log takes time to burn, just like fat does, right? If you, whatever you do today is not going to create instantaneous fat loss tomorrow, but what you do today and tomorrow and on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, that's like that slow burn. So that by the time you weigh yourself again on Monday, that is going to be the measure or the indices of true fat loss. Are you with me on this? Can you see how this might make sense for you? So my tips are, if you are weighing yourself every day, stop right? That's going to be the epitome of crazy making because all you're really doing is you're seeing your body water, like body water fluctuations, and then you're being mad at yourself, right? Or you're going to be hard on yourself, you know, when you don't understand what that scale is telling you. And really the scale is trying to tell you a composite number. I mean, we've got bone, that's not going to change much. We've got muscle mass, that's probably not going to change much either. And then there's water and there's fat. So water and fat are the two variables that we're playing with when it comes to seeing change on the scale. Now, um, okay, if you have any questions around this, type it into the comments because I'm watching them to see. So stop weighing yourself every day. Definitely stop weighing yourself, you know, more than once a day. That's going to be like, that. it's a harmful relationship. And then you need to like remember that you are creating change over time. And so I actually just took it. I'm not even sure. I was at the grocery store. I'll see if I can find it. I've just had a phone nightmare happen. I'm going to see if I can show you though to see. I'll load it here. And this is what I saw. I do. I have it because I'm going to post it. Can you see this? Uh, it says, get a faster metabolism at any age. And then in, in, big, um, in big writing, it says, lose 15 pounds in seven days. So this is the stuff that we see. And even if you, whether you purchase this magazine or not, and it's Women's World, it's one of the highest publicated or uh, consumed women's magazines in North America. We're seeing that. And somehow on some level, we're believing that that is true. No, oh, it's not true. 15 pounds in seven days is insanity. Insanity. So that should not be your goal. And if it is your goal and you're not seeing very large changes happening on the scale, well, no wonder you're getting discouraged, which is why it can't be the only data piece. So do you remember the other ones? It's your energy. It's your mood. It's how you're feeling about yourself. It's how well you're eating. It's how your clothes fit. There are so many other things that you want to track and pay attention to. And when you do that for a month, I guarantee you, if you were to say, I'm going to track some of these indices for a month, all of you will see weight loss happen, right? But not just weight loss. You're going to feel happier. You're going to feel more calm about this journey. You're going to learn how to pace yourself, right? Because have you noticed that no matter how much you want to log to like burn up on a fire, you, no matter how much you move it around, you can't make it burn any faster. It just takes time. So if, yeah. Oh, oh Ethne. Ethne. Ethne, did I say your name right? Thanks for the inspiration. You're so welcome, right? I'm helping. I, my goal is to help as many of you get, you know, into the mindset of health and joy and into the body that feels right for you to live in so that you can have the best experience that you can in this life that we've got right now. And I know that when we get held back by a scale, that somehow standing on a scale on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Friday morning, and that's going to be like the, like, it's going to make us or break us. And more often than not, it breaks us, you know, then we got to get free from this. And here's the thing in many ways, the scale can screw you both ways, right? So here's how it does that. You stand on the scale, hoping that the number goes down and you've done a really good job trying to eat well, and you've been getting your activity and say the number goes up. Well, now you're going to think, screw it. Why would I even bother? This is so hard. Like the mind just goes, right? Like it's like whoosh, down the path. And, and then you can give up. You can quit before you even let yourself get successful at this. Or 
say you've had kind of a weird week and the scale goes down, but you've been out for dinner twice and you had cheesecake for dinner last night, but now the scale drops. So the scale goes you know, the lower number makes you go, yes, yay. I've, you know, I thought I was kind of cheating on my diet, but I guess I've done really well. So I'm going to just keep eating like that. And in fact, I'm going to go out and celebrate tonight. So now this positive or the lower number makes you go and do things that you've just been trying to not do. And so you end up in this like weird, vicious cycle of the scale dictating how you choose to feel about yourself. And then from there, the behaviors you choose to engage in. What about if you just decided to break or like pull back from this harmful relationship and go, huh, you know what? That scale is simply a tool. It's just simply telling me that what I am doing is working or what I'm doing is not. And if it's not working for you, then it doesn't mean that there is something wrong with you or that you're not committed or that somehow your body is broken. It might just mean that you need some help or that you need a better method for yourself. Those harmful methods where you cut out a, a whole food group or you cut out carbs completely and you see that shedding of water weight. And by the way, that's what happens. When you do Atkins, when you go paleo, when you decide to become like to go and become gluten free and that huge weight drop happens in the first week, it's not fat mass that you're dropping in that first week. It's a lot of water weight that's shifting. It's a change over time that we care about. And if you're somebody out there who thinks that it's totally possible for you to lose more than two pounds a week, you know, it really does depend on your starting point. So if you're, you know, 300, 400, or if you're getting up into 500 pounds, well then yes, consistently you might have, you know, the ability to lose a larger number of pounds a week because you're starting from a higher fat mass place. But if you're somebody starting and you've maybe only got, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds that you want to lose, consistently trying to lose, you know, more than three-ish or two-ish pounds a week, what means you're going into a diet and living with a lot of restriction in your life, which is why most women cannot continue living that way once they get off the diet. Are you with me on this? So this is why we can't be trying to find the, like, the right diet for us. What we need to do is find the right lifestyle that we enjoy. Like somebody asked me in one of my programs, what's the best way to lose weight? And I was like, the best way to lose weight is to find the lifestyle that works for you, to find the foods that can fit into your lifestyle that you're going to be happy with and do it forever. Anna, hey Anna, hey Joelle, yay. I recently realized how damaging constantly stepping on my scale was for me. Yeah, it can be, Anna, one or two times a week. I usually say Mondays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Fridays, right? Tracking change over time. Um, we know from weight loss research that if you step, that the you're better able to keep weight off and balance weight maintenance when you do step on the scale once a week or once every two weeks. When you're on a weight loss goal, when you want to see weight loss um, happen, um, once a week consistently does bring about the best results. But that has to be paired with how you choose to think about yourself, right? The scale can't do anything. The scale isn't out there shouting at you that now you're a horrible person that sucks and clearly you have no motivation and you're never going to be successful. Like that, that is all created right up here. And trust me, I've got many of those like damaging thoughts myself. And uh, because I didn't understand the scale, I didn't understand what it was telling me. And so uh, that is my tip for you this week. It's as, a, as opposed to hoping that you can like rush the journey of fat loss, instead, really focus on consistency and then track your changes over time. Because like I said in the beginning, how you feel about something and the reality or the truth about something can be two different things, right? I can feel all sorts of ways and how I feel about something is going to be influenced by all sorts of things, right? I might feel like, again, I come back to money. I might feel like I'm doing a great job um, saving money, but yet when I look at my bank account, well, that's the hard data, right? It actually tells me if I'm doing a good job or if I'm not, or it shows me some of the places where I might need to tighten up that spending or, um, that's one place. Where's another place? Uh, if I have a goal to complete a course, right? Don't, you know what I love is when it shows those course completion bars and it sh tells you how much you've got less, how many, how many modules you have left. Because I might feel like I'm making great headway on something because I put more effort into it this week than last week. But in reality, I may have a longer way to go. So again, I need to pace myself and get consistent with how I'm doing things.
So yeah, I hope that makes a difference, right? The goal is that you get your head right every Monday, right? Like let's get your mind right so you can have a good week. When you have a good week, you tend to feel better about yourself. When you feel good about yourself, you tend to take better action. When you take better actions, you find that you actually create results for yourself. Those results create motivation and you keep doing it on repeat and now you've got momentum. If the scale becomes your tripping point, then you're basically hitting the brakes on success every time you let that scale, well, every time you choose to let the scale become the impetus for this like nasty, abusive conversation in your mind. So stop that. Instead, you know, get a little, I've got tons of notebooks, journals, tracking things, just write it down and then let it go, right? I just always say, you know, let the numbers be the numbers, but lean into the process of getting healthy, finding joy, and getting connected to what you want most.